Hey guys, it's Steve from The Checkpoint. Modern video games are an enigma. There are certain dynamics and mechanisms at work that keep us in this never-ending loop of repetitive IPs belonging in the same genre. Take this game for example, this is the latest instalment in the Call of Duty franchise, Advanced Warfare. Advanced Warfare, like pretty much all Call of Duty titles, suffers from a horrific syndrome named oversaturation. Oversaturation, if you didn't know, is when a product becomes so maximised and copiously overused that it's almost impossible to improve without making major changes to the game. This was Call of Duty a little under a year ago, and coming off the heels of the, and I, thought, I don't think many will disagree when I say this, abysmal Call of Duty ghosts, most fans of the franchise wanted change, wanted a semblance of a spark to reignite the franchise. And Sledgehammer Games heard this and provided them with an all-new movement system. Did it signal the return of the fans who had departed after the travesty that was Ghosts? Maybe. Did this stay for long? God no, and now most players are doing the same thing that they did after Ghosts and jumping ship. This is the paradox that is modern gaming. Year after year we get oversaturated, samey, triple-A IPs that people either love or hate, and it confuses me because it just seems hypocritical that players praise games such as Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag for introducing sea battles but absolutely tear into Advanced Warfare for changing the movement system of the game entirely, which, by the way, is a much bigger change than any sea battle out there. But perhaps I'm being too narrow-minded, of course we have to consider the fact that the game uh, genres exist, and to be honest it's no better on that end either. Sports games, modern military FPSs, AAA adventure games, they're all stuck in this trap where if you try to change your game, you run the risk of failure. And if you keep it the same, you also run the risk of failure. It's one giant trap that holds no prisoners and I strongly believe that to innovate you need to have a game within either the 2D or 3D platformer genre or the puzzle genre. So why does this happen? Why do these games get ensnared in this trap, in this cycle, in this never-ending loop? Well, for starters, let's look at the genre of the games. Advanced Warfare, modern military first-person shooter. Now, the thing about first-person shooters in the modern era is that they are bound by a set of invisible rules. By the way, I was lying. It's actually a futuristic military shooter, but let's just gloss over that and pretend I didn't say that. They are bound by a set of invisible rules. For example, the player must be able to melee attack someone if they get too close, usually via a button press. Or they must be able to see their crosshairs on the screen, or they must be able to walk in all directions. So if even one of these properties is changed, players make a decision on whether or not they like this shift or not, which is exactly what happened with Advanced Warfare's exo movement system. It got implemented and people made a decision whether they liked it or not and for the majority it was a resounding no they didn't like it so they boycotted the game so why exactly if this is the case why is battlefield 4 praised by players despite its similarities to battlefield 3 why do players decide to boycott Titanfall, which never really got on its feet and built a significant multiplayer fan base despite its amazing movement system why are they departing from that so early despite its you know pros of the uh, wall running movement system or the really fun titan mechanic which is completely optional by the way it's not like it's forced upon you like in advanced warfare it's completely optional secondly let's take a look at the length of the series and how long it's been in production the first assassin's creed games came out in 2007 with assassin's creed 1 i believe that was around november time and has since then propagated eight sequels, not counting games outside of the main series such as Liberation for the PlayStation Vita, or the recently re re released Chronicles set in feudal Japan. After three games in the Renaissance era, from you know Assassin's Creed 2 uh, to Assassin's Creed Brotherhood to Revelations, which wasn't was it in the Renaissance era? It might have been on the tail end of the Renaissance era. To Assassin's Creed 3 in the Colonial era. How come Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag is the first semblance of distinct change within the series and yet people praise its mechanics despite the amount of time it's taken to produce this change? It's just bizarre to me. 
I think it boils down to the fact that gaming is subjective and unique, and my definition of what's change may be significantly different to your idea of change, and it's that collision of opinions that makes for such a paradoxical situation. Man, video games are strange, aren't they? Thank you for watching, this was just something to think about, and I'll talk to you soon.